in class today we are going to do agriculture so for agriculture you need to know the importance of soil so first we need to know what how exactly is the soil formed the soil is formed due to weathering weathering is breaking down a rock into smaller pieces so when a rock is broken down into a smaller piece it basically converts into a soil and that soil is needed for plant growth then that soil you know once plant when plant once plant grows then it basically provides food for animals and also oxygen so these animals which basically get the food they further provide us with milk meat and eggs these are different parts of the plant which are you which basically give us food now let's talk about the 2015 um, international year of soil in which uno decided to spread awareness of the importance of soil among the people so it basically wanted people to know that overgrazing you know when plants eat up the plants till their soil uh, when animals eat up the plants till their soil which is basically called overgrazing then this overgrazing basically leads to soil erosion because there are then no roots to hold the soil due to which you know soil can easily be taken away by the wind or by water then second is deforestation so when deforestation is done on the slopes then you know because trees are no more over there 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 are basically no more roots to hold the soil then soil erosion can easily be done by water or by also all and also by the force of the wind then in 1961 to 1980 1998 you know the world population it increased by 100 percent but the land for the food only increased by 10 percent so they're basically trying to tell you that you know the people number of people are basically increasing whereas the land is not increasing as fast as the number of people so this is again a problem that that means not enough food in order to you know cater to the needs of so many of the people around and then um, fertilizers irrigation modern farm machinery this is something exactly this is you know this is very important but this is only important if the soil is protected then also that soil is a habitat for creatures like earthworms and beetles bacteria and, and rabbits but they uh, why, why exactly because they keep the soil healthy and fertile so now you need to do it yourself now think that you know we so basically china and india it has a population which is you know around 30 per, 33% of the world's population whereas it only has a land that is 8% of the world's total popul total land so how is this a, this basically a problem now look at the number of people and the land that we have the importance of agriculture in pakistan so for this you first need to know what exactly is agriculture so agriculture has two parts number one is the cultivation of land in which you know you prepare the land for and then you grow the crops and animals over there then secondly to rear rearing of animals that is raising of animal is also agriculture so 75 percent of the pakistan's population depends on farming now what exactly is the importance of the animals and crops that we get from agriculture so number one, we get the food from them, right? From both the animals and plant and the crops. So this food can be used for the farming families as well as for the farm animals and also for the people who are in Pakistan and outside Pakistan. So for people outside Pakistan, it can be exported. Then secondly, because uh, you know they provide us with the raw materials, raw materials can be taken to different industries in Pakistan and also outside Pakistan. Third is that you know we get the work animals and these work animals are basically used in the farms. Then agriculture basically gives us crops. I told you that you know agriculture has a crop part and animal raising part as well. So in case of crops, we have the best basmati, basmati rice that is you know exported to different parts of the world. And then we have cotton. We also have sugar cane. These are also the important crops. So raw cotton. Basically, for example, from raw cotton, we can make a cotton yarn or thread, and that cotton, that thread can be used to make cotton cloth, and that cloth can be used to make clothes and towels. And then, you know, this basically, this um, graph is showing that wheat and rice, you know, it is it basically um, grew from to 1950 to 2014. So there was an increase in the crop yields because Pakistan was adopting good agricultural. Um, you know initiatives in which agriculture was something that was being protected and good machinery was basically being used and then let's talk about ag agriculture um 
you know, the livestock part of the agriculture. So we have the buffaloes, horses, and donkeys. They are basically used for transport by the small scale farmers. And then we have buffaloes and other animals to give us food, raw material for industries, for example, you know, wool that we get from the sheep. They are basically used in the clothes industry. And then also the manure from these animals, they make the soil fertile. Now we have some chief crops in Pakistan. So chief crops can be food crops and they can also be non-food crops. Now let's first talk about food crops. So we have three main food crops. Number one is wheat, which is most grown. Then number two is rice. And then we have maize. So wheat is basically grown in the upper and lower Indus plain. Rice is grown in the eastern Pakistan, whereas maize is basically grown in the north and you know in KPK. So other food crops that we have include um, sugar cane, edible oil seeds, pulses, and fruits. Let's talk about the non-food crops now. So you so non-food crops are basically used uh, used as fodder for animals, and you know they they can be made from um, so fodders can be made from stalks of wheat, rye, and bursi grass. So we have cotton. As non-food crop that is grown in east of Pakistan, we have tobacco and that is mostly grown in KPK. Now let's talk about the importance of River Indus and its tributaries. So we have River Indus, right? So this is River Indus and this is the tributaries. So tributaries are Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi and Sutlej. So these rivers, they basically provide water to irrigate the land, right? And then, um, so they can irrigate, irrigate the land through artificial means such as pipes, ditches, and canals. A small scale, now let's talk about a small scale arable and subsistence farm. So a subsistence farm is any farm, you know, that is a very small farm and that is used by the family for itself. For example, it basically gives the crops that are basically utilized by the family itself and they're not used for selling purpose then let's talk about the farm so there are some main activities which are carried out on a farm number one is the irrigation so a farm in order to you know grow the crops it basically needs water so irrigation canal basically brings water from river indus and barrage can basically control the amount of water that is in the canal because too much water can destroy the crops right and too little water can also destroy the crop then um smaller irrigation ditch from canal there is small irrigation ditch and then those smaller irrigation ditch can further be narrowed down into even smaller ditch ditches that then carry water between all the fields now we have the cattle on the farmlands as well they basically are used for plowing and then they rear uh, you know so basically people rear the calves and they basically provide the milk as well and then poultry is basically, you know, where hens are and those, those hens basically give us the uh, eggs and meat. Now, what are the works which are carried out on the farm? So, number one, you need to make a land arable, right? So, you need to plow the land. And then you break down the clods, you plant the seeds, you add the fertilizers, provide irrigation, and then you, once, you know, a uh, plant grows, then you can harvest the crops. And then you can, you know, look after the poultry, you need to look after the poultry as well. So these are some basic things that you need to do on a farmland. Now, how, talk, let's talk about how is rice grown. So, you know, uh, in order to grow the rice, the seedlings need, uh, they basically need to be 30 centimeter tall. So they're first uh, grown in nursery so that they, you know, they reach 30 centimeter. Then they're transplanted. Uh, you know, so these seedlings are, when they are taken from the nurseries, they um, are taken to the prepared fields. So th those prepared fields are basically flooded by water from the irrigation ditches because we know rice basically needs water. And then, uh, so this process of, you know, taking from nursery to the prepared fields, this process is called as transplanting. Then processing uh, basically includes fertilizers and insecticides to make sure that, you know, it has proper nutrients and also that no uh, pest in, uh, pest basically attacks it. Then ha you harvest those crops, so water is basically drained out, um, then rice is cut, then comes threshing. So in threshing, grains are separated from the plant, so gr now grains are collected, whereas the grainless part of the plants are then given to animals for food. 
Now let's talk about a cycle of poverty. So you know farmers are working so hard, but why is that they that they are basically stuck in this cycle of poverty? That that is because the amount of production basically depends upon the upon these factors.